Okay, so for today, we're going to talk about ArcGIS Online. And I'm going to refer back to this diagram here to show you where it fits into the big picture of things in the class. So we've already did some underlying concepts. We looked at ArcGIS Pro last class. Today, ArcGIS Online is our focus. Um, raise your hand if you've actually like worked with ArcGIS Online before in one of the other classes. Can you tell me something you did with ArcGIS Online? Like, what did you do with it? Yeah, I made story maps. And we're going to talk a little bit about story maps. That's a very popular thing. Anything else besides story maps? Have you guys have ever used ArcGIS Online, like in a previous class? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, good. I'm not actually going to talk about that today. Um, but Survey123 is another thing. You're going to see that in ArcGIS Online, um, there are a lot of sort of apps and tools that are built in there. Um, and I know my opinion, Esri likes to really emphasize ArcGIS Online versus desktop ArcGIS Pro. Um, but where we're going with it, why I'm spending a whole class on ArcGIS Online, because what you'll see, um, it's going to take us from there up to here and up to here, right? And so for me, at least in, in my view of what this, this particular class is about, ArcGIS Online is where we put data resources that we then plug into other things, okay? And so we did that a little bit last class. Um, you might remember or not this slide or really this workflow that we did last class. So what I have here, this is ArcGIS Pro which our class last time was about just the software basics of it. And by the way, I did make a YouTube video about last class. I'll make sure you know about that. Um, but so we, we worked with ArcGIS Pro, and then at the end of class, we published data out of ArcGIS Pro up to ArcGIS Online, which is here. And then we looked at it in a, um, a, a simple map view. So we're going we're gonna to talk more about this about this part of it, about the data, about data layers, and how it relates to plugging in um, map layers into a JavaScript app and also into Unity, into games. So again, if you're, if you're wandering around and what you're doing, if you look at that example JavaScript map, um, and if, you're, if you know JavaScript code, if you look into it, you'll see, um, you'll see references to ArcGIS Online layers. And that's, we're going to, well, I'll, I address that in the, in the discussion today. So, all right. So ArcGIS Online, um, for RIT, this is the URL we use, and this is tied to your student account. And so why don't we go ahead and just open that right up. Now, again, this is something you were supposed to have done before class today as part of, like, the pre-assessment. And um, to get at it, Oh, I'm just going to move that over there. I'm going to just go to a browser. I'm using Chrome. Um, I'm going to grab that URL. You can grab it out of the slides. I think I'm already logged in. I don't know if you notice, but if you're into like tech stuff, let's see if I can make it happen. Watch the URL. Uh, I didn't do it that time, but it's basically taking your RIT credentials, passing them through, and then getting you into ArcGIS Online. And this is what's called an organizational account. So that's how, if you look at the upper right, I'm able to, you know, that's my RIT name and then underscore RIT ArcGIS. And I've got this kind of screen. The only reason I mention that is there is a broader ArcGIS online that's sort of more of the public one. Um, and that's not what we use in this class because we are an institution that has an Esri site license. I said, this is your, this is, you always wonder, you know, your tuition dollars. This is what your tuition dollars at work, basically. These are things you get as a student, um, and that's why we're going to use this. So go ahead and log into that. And um, so here's what I wanted to do then for our sort of quick tour for today. Um, we're going to look at um, some of the just the high-level menus, um, starting with the gallery. Then we'll just create a basic, just a basic map. We'll look at scenes. And we'll look at some of the apps. I should probably really call that content, uh, maybe apps, FYI. Some of you are already with story maps. They're very popular in um, a lot of different classes because uh, they're relatively easy to use. Raise your hand if you've ever done an ArcGIS online dashboard. Anybody ever done one of those? 
No. So that might be something of, you know, these things I'm just mentioning as FYIs. They're not directly relevant per se. There are ways I believe you can do custom story maps with JavaScript. Um, and that might be something you're interested in. But most of it is GUI pushing buttons kind of um, creating things. I'm not really coding per se. But then I do want to talk about what I'm calling more on layers because that is relevant back over to, you know, when I, when I did this kind of thing before about like from ArcGIS Online up. Okay. So let's just first go look at gallery. Um, so you have, you know, all these top menus here. So if you look at gallery, this will show you all of the things from RIT. So again, this is the organizational account of all of RIT. And there's more than, obviously more than just this class. So we have, this class is 386. Some of you have taken 382, 384, and there's also 484. So at least in my department, there's at least, what, I guess four undergraduate classes that use ArcGIS Online. There's also some online graduate classes. I know we have one student from environmental science. There's a whole world of GIS classes over there. They use this. Um, people from other departments who just maybe are doing research are using this. So that's the whole point of this is the gallery of showing um, other things happening um, around sort of campus when people have shared things with RIT. And we'll talk a little bit about that later when we talk about layers, but you have different levels of sharing. And I want to mention that even now, and if you can file this away in week two and come back to it in like week 10, um, when you start trying to plug layers into things like Unity or the, the JavaScript API, a lot of times those layers have to be shared publicly if you don't want to deal with all the kind of permissions and so forth. Um, if you set it to private, it won't show up. And uh, that may not really mean much to you right now, but um, uh, it'll, it, it could come back to sort of bite you later. And I've seen that happen. That's why I mentioned it. So I, I honestly don't know what all these things are, but let's, like, uh, let's look at this one, hurricane evacuation map. And uh, so I don't know who the owner of this is per se. I'm not, a, I'll be upfront. I'm not, I'm not a, a expert on all the little features of ArcGIS Online, but that's something somebody created at RAT. Um, and um, just to show you other work people are doing. So. So, I mean, it's kind of neat to see a lot of, um, this must be somebody's class assignment. Like whenever you see like, here's hurricane evacuation map, hurricane evacuation map, looks like somebody, it's probably a class project um, and so forth. So that's the gallery um, and you have all the different, you know, types of things um, uh, that, are, that can be found in the gallery. And we'll talk about um, layers and scenes and all this other stuff in just a moment, okay? So that's the gallery, just to kind of go over that. Um, the next thing is the map browse layers. Now, a real fundamental thing you get in ArcGIS Online is the ability to make web maps. And so that's what this menu here is gonna be. And I like to think of this as like, sort of like Google Maps on steroids. I mean, this is like a web interface that you can create um, an interactive web map, adding layers to it. The same concepts like ArcGIS Pro Desktop. Again, if you're new to GIS as a software concept, it's a lot of the same kind of stuff, um, except it's in a web. So like if I were to click in, like right out of the gate, if I wanted to add some layers to this, um, you know, I can look in here. So under my content, now I have a lot of stuff um, that, that, that's, you know, my content. We'll talk more about that directly. So if I look right here, um, this is from class on Tuesday, right? Remember we did, we, we published a layer up. So some of you, if you're new to ArcGIS Online, if you look under my content, you might have one thing. Is that what some of you have is what we did last class? If you're new to the, using this, right? So go ahead, just, just to try it out. So go and like click on that, add it to the map. If everything kind of goes according to plan, 
um, you know, you should see something like that. Again, this is the layer that we took out of ArcGIS Pro, published it up to ArcGIS Online, and now that becomes a data layer that I can put into a map, right? And from there, you know, I could look for other content to add. And frankly, my, my, my Brian content is a mess. I mean, I've had years and years of stuff that's frankly needs a good cleaning and everything, you know, like, but if you were to click on this uh, drop down, you know, now you could start looking um, more broadly. So if my content is at my individual level, um, there is this idea of groups. Um, I, I've only done this a little bit over the years, but let's say you have a special, um, a special project you're doing um, where you want to create a separate subgroup of people that are working on that. And I think, yeah, so for example, when's the last time, um, how far back in time does this go? Uh, yeah, look at this one, Rwanda 2017 tracking. It was updated in, in, in 2017. So the quick backstory here, in 2017, I led a study abroad trip to Rwanda, and I had a group of about 11 students that were using um, a tool. At the time, it was called Collector for ArcGIS. It's like a mobile app for collecting data, and, and all that data goes into ArcGIS Online, so I created a special group of those students. Um, and uh, let's see if this even works. Yeah. So it switched over to Rwanda. Although, is there anything in here? Let's see. Yeah, that maybe wasn't the best example, but um, but that was the idea of data that comes from a group. And so that might be something you do someday. Now, you can also um, take a look sort of, you know, again, back to the organization. This kind of goes back to um, what we're just showing with the gallery, right? Here's somebody... Um, from just about yesterday or so, 8.30.22. Invasive plant survey. That sounds like something, um, I'm guessing from like an environmental science class, right? Now, sometimes it can be hit or miss. You can also go to the broader world of ArcGIS Online. So now, now you've gone from inside of our, to your individual thing, to RIT as an organization, now you're going out into the broader sort of world of ArcGIS Online in general. And so just even this very first one, U.S. Marine Protected Areas OGC Features, and it's and the author is Esri, the company, U.S. Federal Data, right? So even that gives you a sense of this is probably going to be a good data set, so I'll just take a look at it. You know, and this is a good layer. They took the time to actually write the description and, you know. So sometimes I'll just give you my, my personal opinion. If someone's like watching this video later on YouTube, like sometimes you can find really good data. Like even just I know from experience that the author of this is Esri Federal Data. So the quality is going to be good. And this is kind of interesting. So U.S. Marine Protected Areas, which, you know, kind of sounds sounds pretty interesting, really. Um, you know, um, being somebody who's into the Great Lakes, you know, here's some areas around, like, it looks like, what, Lake Huron here. So that's something you could actually use if you were trying to create some kind of app or tool showing that thematic content. Sometimes, though, some you'll, you won't you will find the content you'll find out there... Um, like let's say disasters. You know, like disaster response route by BC's Map Hub. Okay, right, so what's BC Map Hub? You can look at this order. Oh, the British Columbia. Okay, so this one might be um, useful, British Columbia and Canada. Take a look too, by the way, You'll see this a lot with ArcGIS Online, the name of whoever it is, and then maps.arcgis.com, right? Just like we are RIT, ArcGIS, maps.arcgis.com. Those are examples of organizational accounts, right? And so, um, so 
So it's showing up over here in the legend. Um, maybe I got to zoom in further. I'm just kind of improvising here, looking for layers. But this is the kind of thing that, you know, sometimes you'll find good content. Sometimes, um, not saying this content isn't good. It could be something that I'm not doing right. But, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. So I just had to zoom in further. Um, but, you know, so you can, you can create web maps with layers you find. Um, there's all kinds of tools, tables you get. Um, you can change the base map around. It's, it's, very, it's a lot of the same functionality as um, ArcGIS Pro, especially for a data viewer. I have data sets I want to look at. I want to create something. I could then share it out. Um, and where's the share button? Map tools and sketch. Let's see. If I go here, um, they keep changing it every year, so I can never save. Save as, I'll call it um, class to be test. Save it where I save it. And um, we'll come back to this in just a moment, but that's. That's basically um, the map, the map viewer that you can create an online map and share it out, and we'll um, we'll go over that in a, just a moment. Any any questions on that? If you guys have been following along, did you, I mean, it's hopefully pretty intuitive. Now, if you ever do really want to make um, web maps, uh, I would argue that this has more power than something like Google Maps because you really can put all of your own data in there with a lot more easy. I think easy to style control. And this is just a very lightning fast introduction to it. I mean, you could do a lot of lectures on going through all of how to really drive uh, something like this. Okay. Um, so we'll come back to that map when we talk about content in just a moment. All right. So let's go look next at a scene. So the map is basically your two dimensional view of things, very similar kind of, of controls and interface like a Google Maps. If you go over here, if you're there, if we go under scene. Now the scene viewer um, is for three dimensional content. I personally have never really um, used this too much for anything, just to look at data. But I do have um, a couple of, uh, this is data that I created and we'll talk about it with layers. But if you wanna click on it, um, here's some ones you can look at to, um, all right, let's click on this one visualize new developments because this is probably going to be more interesting than um, content that I create, right? So this, this shows us a little bit now of what we'll get into next week is working with 3D data. Um, ArcGIS Pro has come a long way in, in over the last 10 years of really pushing out the ability to do 3D stuff. And for those of you interested in game design and development, this is the pathway into taking content like this from the real world and putting it into Unity. And later in the semester, we'll address this more directly on how to do that. But um, you basically create what are called scene layers, and the scene layers get referenced into uh, the Unity APIs using um, C Sharp code. And so Google Maps also, you know, as a, as, as a comparable thing, does 3D. I think if I hold... Yeah, if you hold your right button down on your mouse and move the mouse, that'll allow you to kind of tilt it around and so forth. And then I use my mouse wheel just to zoom in. And um, to the best of my ability next week, like I said, we're going to talk about 3D. We're going to talk about 3D in ArcGIS Pro, and we're going to hopefully look at City Engine. And those are the tools that you use to build this kind of stuff, where you take... Um, they have a mix of things in here. You can see they have these just kind of generic, um, I don't know, would you call those wireframes? I mean, they're just like, that's not really, a, you know, it's just an extruded polygon, right? It doesn't have any of the, um, of this kind of like more interesting looking um, exterior meshes and the kind of things that make it look more real, right? But um, that that's what a, a scene kind of looks like, okay? 
So it's kind of cool. Like I, you know, again, I personally have never um, really had to make a web scene and shared it, but it's very similar to the web map. It's a it's a web based interface you can put data sets into, then share that out depending on what you're you're trying to do, um, your application or you know your uh, your goals are. Okay, so that's a scene. Any questions on that? No. Okay. Okay. Let's go spend a little more time now on content and apps, FYIs. So again, I'm going to go here now to content, uh, under content. Depending on where you were, um, if you were you have these menus up here, here's content. Now, content is very similar to like your Windows Explorer, right? It's all of your stuff. Just like... In desktop, um, you know, I use I, I personally use Windows Explorer all you know all the time. So this is how you manage all your stuff. It's like sort of like catalog in ArcGIS Pro. And here you can see um, like here's that web map, right? So here's the different kinds of things um, you can create. And like if I go back to this um, simple web map I made earlier, just to demonstrate, this is where you now. Um, have sort of an overview of the different kinds of things that are in content. So in this case, this is a web map, some basic metadata or information about it when it was created, what's inside of it, where that's coming from. It's got uh, a feature layer, two feature layers and an OGC feature layer. Does anybody know what OGC stands for by any chance? I'd be impressed if you did. If you ever go on to really, if you do more with GIS, um, you might come across um, OGC. It's a um, the Open Geospatial Consortium. And um, it's basically, they define standards for, um, I mean, amongst other things. I mean, this is a huge uh, organization that's been around forever. But like information standards. So in the world, as a side comment, in the world of GIS, there's tons and tons of different kinds of data. And so they're, they've worked for years at creating standards. Kind of like, I used to tell students like electricity, like I can plug, you know, what is it, 110? I can take the plug from my laptop from this room and I can go to another room on campus and plug it in and I don't have to worry about it not working. Like, or if, like as opposed to if I go to Europe, if I go to like Germany, like I need a different kind of plug. There's different standards that are used for electricity and there's different standards for everything. So everybody has something that they can agree upon. So we all can work together. Have you guys ever come across that concept and other sound familiar, like an ISO standard? Um, so it's the same thing with ge uh, geospatial data, right? Um, so in the, in the ideal world, um, everybody is, is following common standards for geospatial data so that when um, have you guys heard the news about Pakistan flooding have you guys been following world events Did anybody yes no raise your hand if you heard about what's going on in Pakistan okay well real quick like if you didn't know um, there's a horror there's a I heard it on the news today um, 33 million people have been affected by floods, $10 billion in damage. And uh, the lady from Pakistan I heard in the news, she said to put it in American perspectives, um, the flooding is as big as the entire state of Colorado. So if you've ever been to Colorado, imagine all, like at least just land area is flooded. All of Colorado is flooded. Okay. That's a huge, huge, big issue. The, whole, the world has to respond to this. So let's say in the United States where we have all this really great satellite imagery, we want to share that with people in Pakistan, but we don't use the same data standards. We use our Esri tools, they use something else, and things can't talk to each other. That would be an example of where open standards are, could literally be a matter of life and death because you need to get that data to the people on the ground and you need to have standards um, for sharing it. Now, that's just a quick example, all right? So anyways, that, so that's an OGC feature layer from NOAA and they're a federal government agency. So that's, uh, that's uh, a good thing that they're following standards because data created by the U.S. government is, is meant to be used for the public and so forth. 
So anyways, that was a bit of a, uh, a tangent I went on there. But back to the map thing and this content page, right? So from here, I can share it. And um, again, this is what I talked about, the sharing level. Um, again, make note of this later on. If you create some data that you want to plug into something else like a game, you'll often find you want to make it public to share with everyone um, so it can get out. And then um, from there, you can go down and um, where's the link to it? I guess I'm, I'm out of date on, oh, here we go. Um, Maybe you don't get the link here. So I think the way, at least, again, some of you guys might know how to do better, but you should be able to get a link. Like if I take that link, let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna take that link, copy it. I'm gonna put it in a browser I never, that has nothing to do, um, I'm gonna put it in Firefox, which I use for things that are not related to, uh, I should be able to just, yeah. Yeah, so what I did was I took the link to that map and I can then use that to share it out with somebody. So I'm, I went, you know, I do all my RET stuff in Chrome. So now I'm in Firefox, it has nothing, there's no, I do that to make sure it works. There's no logins, there's nothing associated. Um, and because I shared it publicly, I was able to get it out and like, you know, if I had taken the time to make it look nicer, I could have made the legend look better um, and so forth. Let's see if I can break it actually. Um, so if I were to go back here, change it back to owner, then go back to Firefox and refresh it. Yeah, so see that? I changed the sharing. Now I'm getting hit with a login wall because I, I took it out from being public. I brought it back into RET. So again, I mentioned that um, later on, you might come across that as a problem that you, you created it and you just forgot to change the sharing on it and you got you get hit with this uh, login wall. Okay. Um, so go back to content here. Okay, let's talk a little bit now about, so the content is where you keep all of your things. Mine's a real mess over years and years of putting things in here. I'm trying to get a little cleaner. Um, I created a folder here. I thought I could share the folder, but in here are some things I wanted to show you. The content page is where you start getting at the create app. And so I thought, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about um, Story maps, let's talk about that first. Um, what do you guys, for those of you that have done story maps, what do you remember about it if you created a story map? What did you do with it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so think of what it's a story map. So it's a way to tell a story, right? So a lot of times um, when you do like an analysis, right? There's a lot of like literature on the process of doing analysis. Like you come up with a hypothesis about something. Um, if it rains more, the lake is going to flood. Okay, that's my hypothesis or whatever. So I go and collect data on rainfall. I do an analysis showing how the lake is gonna change with rainfall, and then I need to present the results to somebody, right? And often, when you do an analysis, you have to distill that information that you've created into formats that are easy to digest, right? Because um, a lot of times people who you're doing analysis for are not gonna look at your data, they're not gonna look at 50 maps you've created, they need to get it in like one or two slides, really. So that's what a story map is designed to help create a narrative. Um, and so if you want to just look at one that I created, um, does this link work? It's, this is in the slides. Does this, does this work for you guys? Did you, you didn't get hit with a, if you're following along, did you get a login prompt? Did it work? Raise your hand if you see this. Okay, good. That's, I mean, it's, all right. And then do you scroll down, do you actually see a map or do you see black? All right, when I did it yesterday, it was black. I didn't understand, you know. Okay, but this is a story map. This is just a one that I did quickly um, for class, but it, it, it has all the basic elements, right? So in this, this is from what I did this summer. I was back in Rwanda. We were doing mapping of Rwandan 
households and their resilience to disasters. And so this would be a good case of, I was there, we collected tons of data, but now I need to sort of tell the story about what we did, right? I, I'm not, I may not really be able to show a decision maker like 100 pictures or, or 50 maps. I have to distill it out into the basic things. So I'm able to put text in, um, pictures, and also the map, right? So this, this pulls directly behind the scenes. It's pulling content directly from um, my ArcGIS Online layers that we just kind of look, really my maps even, the maps we create, you can plug those into the story, right? So in this case, um, if I click on a point, You know, um, this is something we're not going to talk about in this class today, but um, we heard about Survey123. Mm -hmm. that, that's a tool that you can use for uh, field collection. So in this case, I collected a point and I, I recorded an audio. Okay. So now it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. So after if it's... Which you're probably not going to hear because... Okay. This is why I did the summer. Okay. 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 So if you're wondering, that's a language called Kinyarwanda, which I don't speak. So what I did was we would go to like a house, like, you know, in my story map here. Um, that's actually in the refugee camp, but the houses actually are pretty similar. So you go to like a house like this. There's a person there. I had a translator. I asked, you heard me talking the question recorded it. So all of those points that you see here, rep, those green points represent where I did an interview. And then we tagged the interview location with an audio file. All of that got put into ArcGIS Online, became a data layer, and then I plugged that data layer into my story map, right? So that's, that's my example of using a story map, but there's tons and tons of them uh, out there and examples you can look at. Now to to have it on record to create one of these things the way you do it um, uh, under you would be under my content under create app right so I click on create app and I'm not gonna have time to go through all of these there's lots of them but ArcGIS story maps is how you get started creating a story map um, and you get this GUI um, And they give you tons of tools for, uh, for um, it's basically, I think of it, this is just my opinion, it's basically like a glorified PowerPoint, like some, because it's, it's, a lot of these kind of tools are just like slides, right? It's like, you know, like PowerPoint, you know, like all my PowerPoints are like, not unlike a comic, right? A comic is a series of panels. This is what's happening in this frame, the next thing and next thing. Now, PowerPoint has a lot of tools for interactive stuff too. Um, I, I use it in a very sparing manner because that that's, I don't, sometimes you can over-engineer these things. I remember my very first PowerPoints, I had all kinds of animations flying around because I, you know, I thought it looked cool, but it didn't do the job. But same thing here, right? So here's my first, I don't know, there's probably some term like chapter in the story. Um, So that's like a, 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 a text pane, and then I can go here. Now I can put the more interesting things in, like a map. And from here, I can plug in my um, my content. Here's my map we just made earlier, or that, you know, I made, just kind of showing you it. So we're back to British Columbia evacuation route. Place that there. And, and on and on it goes, right? Pictures, graphs, and so forth. So um, they are, they are, it is a really cool tool. It's, it's, a, it's a real good thing you get in RTS online. It's good for presenting final projects. Um, 
you know, so it could be something you could do in this class, except in this class, I'm really looking for you to build algorithms. Um, so I don't know if the story map, I didn't get a chance to look it up. Yeah, okay. So this might be something to go after um, if you want to, like, go under the hood more with story maps. I mean, it's one thing to, to push the buttons and, and add things in, but, like, this would be the more interesting for this class to go after, like, uh, the API behind it. So there is that. Okay. Um, any questions about a story map? Again, just present, just introducing this if you've never seen it. Um, Let's look next now at another thing that I think a lot of you said you never really had seen this. Um, oh, I should mention this if you didn't. With story maps, this is my one personal thing I like to just tell you about. Um, also in my, I haven't worked with these guys in a couple of years now, but um, in 2019, um, I was spending a lot of time in Jordan at a place called the Zatri Refugee Camp. And um, this was a blog post from Esri we did. We used story maps to tell the story about refugees, Syrian refugees. And um, unfortunately, um, this the story here, surviving cancer as a refugee, um, it's behind uh, it's behind a login prompt now. But um, the gentleman here you see, um, his name was Sufyan. He was a Syrian refugee, a good friend of mine. He unfortunately passed away from cancer about three years ago, it's been now. But um, we used the story map to, um, help hit the narrative about his experience as uh, as a refugee, right? This is the border with Jordan and Syria. He left here. He crossed through into Jordan. Um, this is kind of a place where he was living. And um, I don't think it's... We had a... Uh, was it? Go, I had a GoFundMe and everything, but um, you can look at that if you wanted to. Um, what's this? I think this is the same. Yeah, it's, I know they, it's hit behind a, a login wall now. But so story maps can can be used for um, powerful things. Um, and this is, for me, this was a personal thing that I did with story maps. So if you're interested in that, I'll close a few hundred windows here. Okay. How about we'll move on to dashboards. Um, so similar thing, a dashboard. Here's an example of a dashboard if you want to open this link up. So those of you that are interested in things like data science, um, sometimes you call it visual analytics, um, you might want to take a more closer look at dashboards. Um, I'm personally more interested in this kind of thing. This again is another just a quick example, but the idea here with a dashboard, right, the metaphor of a dashboard, like a car, you drive a car, it has a dashboard. It has the speedometer, engine temperature, who knows what they have now, you know, they have more than that, but like you have your sort of visual interface for showing you what's happening. So a dashboard dashboards are used um, in a lot of analytical functions. Like in this case, I have the map here on the right are COVID cases, and um, there's no legend or anything. But the um, the bigger the circle, the um, the the larger the number of COVID cases, and that kind of goes back to the mapping concepts I talked about. I think last week, visual variables. And then this is the um, this is the, uh, the chart showing it in a different way. So this is like a geographical representation where you might look at it and say, oh, look, I see a trend and pattern down here. Or look, I see a couple outliers over here. And so when I move my mouse over, um, if I click on that line there, notice what it did. It filtered the map, right? It, everything else, um, kind of got grayed out, the map got filtered, and it took me to, um, to, uh, to Queens, to Queens County, right? And so dashboards can be a really great way, f again, for visually interacting with data, exploring data to find trends. Like if I look at another kind of tall one over here, that's another part of New York, as opposed to maybe down here, This is um, Columbia County near Albany, right? Now, again, this was just a quick example, but imagine you could do a lot more with um, just fixing the, the interface up and so forth. But that's 
the point of it is I just wanted to show you what a dashboard is. Have you guys ever seen something like this in another context? Anybody ever worked with a software called Tableau? You ever heard of Tableau? No? Um, If you're interested in, for next semester, I'm doing a graduate level class called Geographic Visualization, and I talk about this software. Um, yeah, here's like a good example of it. This is like from their, their stuff. Um, yeah, like here's an example of like a really, really good, so Tableau is all about like, the visual analytics, the visual interface. And it's got, I mean, this is like a professional high-end tool designed to combine different views of data that you can interact with, apply statistical analysis. It's all about visual representations. I mean, by comparison, you know, my little hack job here, it's the same general idea though. It's a map, it's a chart, they interact and so forth. Tableau just takes it to the, you know, the whole nother level. There's also something called, I think it's called Power BI. Do you guys ever heard of that one, Power BI? No, Power BI is a tool from Microsoft. Um, yeah, even like Power BI versus Tableau, right? Um, right, same same kind of deal here. It's a, there, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much, the, I mean, the same thing as Tableau in a big picture sense. Why you choose one over the other, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've just, I learned Tableau in graduate school and that's why I stuck with it. I think Microsoft Power BI probably integrates more with Microsoft stuff. But again, I mentioned this for things like co-ops, um, really for co-ops. If you get a job on a co-op where you have to do software engineering or if you have to do data analysis, um, these tools like Tableau and Power BI and so forth are really the industry standard tools for doing it. Um, and uh, some of the other classes in the in the um, GIS minor and immersion kind of cover these topics. So again, this is just to kind of make you aware of this if you've never even seen it. Um, and it might be something you might be interested in following up. So, but the point is back to ArcGIS Online, you can create Dashboards um, right out of content, create app, dashboard, and then um, very similar to the story map, you can uh, basically pull, oh, you can pull content in, your your content can then become the, um, the basis of what you're doing here. So again, here's my map I created earlier that um, I can start using the data from that map to put it into a, uh, a dashboard, right? And uh, just for sake of time, I'm not gonna really go into that, but that's another option you have, okay? All right. All right, any questions so far? Yeah. Am I holding your interest? I hope you find this interesting. I don't know as much as you find this interesting, but um, let's go more onto this. So this is more of a technical discussion now because when I go, do I have that slide there? Yeah. When we when we um, when we start going now from ArcGIS Online, which you've been introduced to, but I'm more interested in you know some of you said I'm a web developer, or I'm a game designer. I want that's what I'm interested in in this class. I want to go from here to there. Um, that's where layers come in. Now we've only really looked at layers a little bit, and I haven't really gotten into the formalities of talking about what they are. But I found this link, which I thought was interesting. I'm gonna just grab and look at that link real quick. So this is from the, the JavaScript API reference. When you start to bring in content into whatever it is, if, if it's a game with Unity or it's an Esri JavaScript map, there are a lot of different kinds of layers. The layer is the fundamental, um, yeah, I, in fact, I'd start reading the most fundamental component of the map, right? It was the it was the fundamental thing we saw in ArcGIS Pro. I gave you that zip file. We added things into the table of contents. Those were all layers. So that same basic idea continues on um, um, into the other tools. And if you just look at the different kinds of layers, feature layers, graphics layers, image layers, scene layers, 
CSV, KML, I just get overwhelmed. I kind of just give up. Like after a while, like I don't, <laughs> um, like anybody know what GeoJSON is? You ever heard of that one? Oh, GeoJSON? Yeah. What's GeoJSON? <laughs> right. So, um, uh, you know, a lot of things in the GIS world, like RSS, you just take the existing thing and you put geo in front of it and then it becomes, so it's, it's a JSON layer that has, um, it's a, it's a, it's a JSON representation of geographic features. It's basically just the coordinates, right? Yeah. The USGS is a good example of that. Um, and so forth. So there's a lot of different kinds of layers that are out there. The one that we're going to talk about for now is a feature layer. So a feature layer can represent points, lines, and polygons as vector graphics. And you can do a lot of stuff with that. Um, so let's take a little closer look now how that look what that looks like in ArcGIS Online. So let's go ahead, if you haven't already, um, if you haven't downloaded and unzipped that, that ArcGIS Online JavaScript example map. And you should see something like that. Did you guys, did that open up for you okay? It should just be a basic base map with really, it's, uh, it's this is from um, uh, a JavaScript thing that I, I use um, later in the semester, okay? Do you guys get that to open up? It's just a, it's just the campus. Okay, but check it out when I do this. Well, yeah, I move my, but I'm gonna go over here. When I, I click on this drop down, and I'm gonna select Monroe County Roads from the drop down, and you should see some blue lines show up on the screen. Did that work for you? Is that if you did it? I'm gonna use my mouse wheel over the map to zoom out, and I, you know, I see this kind of mess of blue. Did that work? Raise your hand if that worked. Okay, if you're following along with it. Okay, so that's what I wanted to kind of dig into that. It, you know, it seemingly was easy enough just to click the drop down, you know, like the Monroe County outline or something. That's going to be a gray thing. And uh, place names and... Okay, so with that, let's talk about how from a seemingly um, simple drop down of the screen, how I got to have things show up in the map. Right, because that's all ArcGIS Online feature layers that are driving that. Okay, so basically the way I got it there was these are data sets I've had for a long time. They basically were created in ArcGIS Pro, like we did last class. Then they got published up to ArcGIS Online, which we also did last class. And then for this class, they've been made available publicly as a feature feature layer. Now, I believe if you are able to click on this link, I don't know if you guys, does, does this, are you guys able to see that page or do you get hit with a login? Do you guys see that? It's just a GIS web sample data. Do you guys see this? You didn't get hit with a login or anything? No? All right, cool. Yeah. So what this is, is just some of my content. So I, I even, I did clean it up. So I, just to show you where this comes from, I go to content, ArcGIS samples. It's, it's a, um, yeah, let me back up again, do that again. Um, so it's a feature layer hosted, okay? It's a feature layer, right, from the from the API reference. So within that feature layer, there are one, two, three, four, five different layers, okay? And make note down here of the service URL, okay? Now, another thing we're gonna, let's look at this other link services, take that second link on this slide if you're following along. We'll take a look at that, open that in a new window.
Okay. That you should be able to see. I don't think it's the same as, maybe it is. Maybe on this page, I think if you copy that and then paste it here, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. So again, just, so I was on, I, I just to go over that again, I took this, I took this link here. I opened that in a browser and that took me to um, this, this page. And then from that page, I scrolled down and I got this URL. I just hit the copy or I think view should work as well. If I hit view. I guess that works too. I'm just used to copying it. So you can do it that way. But actually I like it. I like, whoop, I like it better with the um, copy to clipboard. So I copied that. Um, I'll just do it one more time here. I pasted that in and I'm looking at, cause this actually, this URL is what I'm interested in for what I want to show you next. Okay. So now take a look here, the feature server, and there's Monroe County place names, roads, major roads, roads, census tracts, outlines, right? It's all the same things that are in that dropdown on the JavaScript page. And so behind the scenes, you know, how do I get, basically what I want to do is go from here, from this into, into this. And the way I do that, if you were to now look, and again, I know this, this, this class doesn't have a coding prerequisite, but this is just, I, I can talk you through this even if you, um, this does, if this looks like a foreign language, but if you know JavaScript, um, what you want to do is go ahead and take, take the example Mac. Um, I'm going to open it in Notepad++ just to look at it. And I'm going to scroll down to about line 90. And if you're, um, I'm using Notepad++, I'm looking at line 90. Okay. And so this is a variable called URL root. And look at the string that I have there in this case, right? That string, I think it, does it click right out of here maybe? But what I do is I grab, if I were to grab and highlight that, all that line, it's the way it's on mine, I have it set to word wrap. Um, it's just word wrapping. But if I copied that whole thing out and stuck that in a new browser, right, it's that. It's, it's that thing that I just showed you. So in this JavaScript app, um, I just have, I mean, I hard coded it and it was sufficient for what I'm going to do. That is the... The re, um, I didn't really talk about what a REST service is, but it's basically the way to get at the, the, uh, the data, the feature data, the feature layer that's in ArcGIS Online as a REST service from that URL, okay? So that's what that is. Now take a look at line 91, okay? It's that layer, um, it's gonna create a new variable called layer URL that takes the root, which is that big long string, and then um, real programming basics. What's going on there if you know how to code? What, what do you think's happening there? Yeah? Concatenation, Concatenation right? I'm taking two, two bits of things and putting them together. So I'm taking the string of URL root, and then I'm getting, what's this? What's this? The layer index, right? So what I'm doing is, up here is layer index. And what that does is if we were to scroll down and look at, um, here's that selection box, right? So back over here, this thing is called the selection box, right? And code wise, it has an ID of layer select. That's the name, how you refer to it in the web page. And then whenever you change what's in there, it's going to call this uh, method called add layer, what we just looked at, and it passes the value um, of whatever was selected. So if you selected Monroe County Roads, it's going to pass the value to back up to, into the function add layer. Okay? Is that clear? 
I know some of you have coded, some of you haven't, and this might be maybe a lot to jump right into. But basically, whenever you change the box here, whenever you, when I like, when I, okay, I want census tracts. When I click on that, behind the scenes, it's, it's sending the number three up, back up here. Okay, it's sending the number three into that, okay? And then the number three in this example is part of the, um, this thing here. So I take that root and I stick that number three on the end of it and it's actually logging it to the console. So if you wanted to look at what it looked like, um, control shift I, there's, there's the, um, there's that URL that's coming out on line 92. Okay. So where I was going with all this is, if I go back over here, I again, that's that URL I have. Then notice within the feature, I think it's either a feature collection, it's calling it a feature server. So within that feature layer, there are sub layers within it. And each of those have an index referenced by a number, right? So the Monroe County census tracts is number three, hence why over here, I had it number three in the checkbox, right? So it matches up. So if we click on that, that is now um, the full URL, right? And so with that, I can then go in my code, um, once I put the whole URL together, then on line 113, I'm telling the map, add to the layers, the feature layer um, that was referenced by um, the, that URL that I put together. So I basically have the feature collection or the feature server, its root is, is stored, and then I simply just append on the number of whatever it is based on what was selected, and that's how it gets added to the map. And um, so if I look at this slide, yeah. So this, this is where I try to visually outline. So based on what I select, I pass the value to the layer index, and then see how I highlighted it in red here? All I do then is append the index of whatever the layer is onto that, and that's the URL that gets passed along to make it happen in the JavaScript map, all right? So, so that's an example of how content that goes into ArcGIS Online that you might have created in ArcGIS Pro, like something back like this, eventually can then be used in your in, in an app, like a JavaScript app. Okay. Any questions on that? I don't know if that was a was that clear on how I did that, or how that how how this how this particular example. Or even if you didn't have a coding background, which is totally fine, it's basically the point here is that you know your content a lot of times will live in ArcGIS Online. And it's important to understand how to go about accessing it through um, through things like the services URLs and also making sure that it, it can be publicly available and so forth, okay? Um, and so that was the way into JavaScript. It's going to be a very similar thing now for Unity. If you want to, if you're interested in this class for game making, right? If I if I use uh, my red thing here, whoop. So I, I created something in ArcGIS Pro, created put it to ArcGIS Online as a scene, and then to get it into the SDK for Unity, um, I wanted to show it. I wasn't able to get Unity all up and running, but this is a slide I'll use to discuss it. Um, similar kind of thing. In this case, um, I created a what's called a scene layer. And we looked at scenes earlier in class today. If you were to grab this URL and just put that in a browser, um, you'll see a lot of this kind of, basically like a, a JSON representation. But basically, it's going to, um, this time it's tiles, right? It's a, it's, it's a different kind of data layer. Like the, the um, JavaScript example I just showed, 
that was more of a straightforward vector, points, lines, and polygons um, feature layer. Now, when you get into the world of Unity, it's going to be three-dimensional scene layers that are a little more complicated to work with in terms of making sure everything's set up correctly with the projections and all that. Um, but it, it does work. And um, if you look, so what I did here was, here's what my scene layer looks like in ArcGIS Online. It was just a very simple, um, I'm not good at game narrative. It's the three towers of Ontario that if the sun shines through them, the Godzilla creature, I don't know, I get like, <laughs> I'm just making that up. Game, you know, game world, you have to come up with some kind of narrative, right? Um, but what I did was, this is Unity. And uh, over here, I had an avatar guy running towards those three things, the three pillars of Ontario, to just prove it. And if you look at the documentation for um, Unity scene layers, it even says right there, 3D object scene layers. Those 3D object scene layers are coming from ArcGIS Online. Okay. So again, this is all background to get you ready later in the semester um, where a lot of these things are coming from. And we'll definitely address this more in a hands-on capacity um, later in the semester. Okay. Let's see. So, all right. Um, are there any questions on any of that? Was that pacing okay? I don't know if that's too much content. But I mean, hopefully you get a sense of now, again, how everything is connecting together. Because um, ArcGIS Online, it's, it's not the, again, it's not the central focus of the class, but it's going to come up later when you try to put your own content into, into things. Okay? Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.